Hello everyone, TB Gamer. Welcome back to another video. Now, <laughs> I've just had to find the save again on Dream Daddy. It didn't save, so I've had to quickly go for it all. Quickly make my character. So we're here, but we're back to Dream Daddy. Now, <clears throat> sorry I've done a game video in a long time because I've been really busy. And obviously I went to London and now it's December. So I'm going to try and ramp up all of the videos. I'm going to try and get one out once a week, maybe two a week. I don't know. We'll see where we get up to. I do also have another video coming out. It's a VR game. Yes, VR games are coming back. Specifically, it'll be my first horror. So I don't know if I've uploaded that one first or this one first. I'm literally waiting for the stupid PlayStation Move controls to charge. So yeah. <clears throat> but before anything, let's get into that intro. Get it roll. <laughs> so, we're back playing Dream Daddy. And last episode, we just bumped into Craig. I think his name's Craig. Um, so yeah, Amanda and I flopped down onto the couch. Amanda has shoved some empty boxes out of the way before she could sit. <clears throat> Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into those boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Oh, Dad, it'll, it'll be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. <clears throat> it's just, you're my little girl, and it's going to be weird not having you around. I've also, by the way, got a really bad cough today, so I'm probably going to be doing a lot of drinking, a lot of coughing, so sorry. If you're wondering, no, I don't have COVID. I'll come visit and I'll text you every day and take lots of pictures. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course. Are you going to be on uh, okay and you're lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Forget our school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Medium sized dog, handshake around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it costs for me to give up my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and simple needs. Just like Amy. <clears throat> well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pilot envelope slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelope and shuffles through them. She pulls out one and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan's College of Art and Design. <clears throat> Open it! But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. <coughs> yeah, it's just like my entire future. No big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips it open with her teeth. <coughs> At a girl. We have a letter opener, but I care. <coughs> I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admission community reviews your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we. Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we're unable to offer you an admission for the McGuire College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, <clears throat> sweetie. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I shouldn't have put that experiment stuff in my portfolio. The admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you've put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up, for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> I know, it's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. No, they're not. Her face is opposite, but I shouldn't push her t on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma and Emma P are, are sleeping over tonight. So, <clears throat> you need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Yes, please. Well, I have to know that I have conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you have the place all to yourself. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. <clears throat> I'm secretly the mayor of the town. Um, gotta attend the union meeting. I'm going clubbing. I'm going clubbing! I'm going to put on a nails outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. Nch, nch, nch. The hottest dance moves, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones that all the kids are doing these days. Alright, but I'm not going to pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually just going to go to... Uh, stay home and finish unpacking. Go and watch the game. Let's go watch a game. Nice. <clears throat> Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. 
the game on TV at someone somewhere else other than here. Okay, cool. Well, while you do that, I'm going to do drugs and commit some light arson with Emma's. I'm concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. I'm under shrugs. <laughs> I expected you guys to be up to some white collar crime at this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. <clears throat> you're kidding about drugs and crime, right? Mm. Yes, Dad. <coughs> I'm just making sure. I gave her a pat on the head. Pat, pat. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, making fun of sports is played out. Alright then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. <coughs> hey, don't forget you have a, that meet, meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh right, Mr. Vega? Yup, totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can't remember their names. Just as I'm heading towards my room, the doorbell rings. Ding dong! <clears throat> Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! <clears throat> and house a handsome, clean cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Hi! I know it's kind of late, but I bet way too many cookies. I just can't have these in the house, or I'll eat them all. Oh. Where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm the next door neighbor. Also, some of these, some of these might be different. So I think in the last episode, um, we already met Joseph. But when I was trying to go through, I was just spamming every single button to get to where we were. So <clears throat> might be a little bit different. Oh yes, hi, I'm Daddy. That's what my name is. I saw the movie man. I just thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you, bring you some. My daughter Christy wanted to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate cookies. Oh. Bit chips. We both share a laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, kids, right? Amanda pokes her head out of the room and immediately hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies. So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. <clears throat> well, thanks for the cookies. Meow. <coughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come back. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there must be something wrong to, for you to try and raise more than two kids. I have four. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant. <clears throat> Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met. My social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Is the missus around? Mister, actually. And, uh, no, not anymore. He died. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both make things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? <clears throat> I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Opening the door, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm Joseph, your new neighbor. I probably not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue at the coldest like and I'd love for you to come by and see. I meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter, Amanda, would love to come stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands and seal the deal. Well, Neb, I'll let you go to bed. See you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. <coughs> sure thing, neighbor. God, my coughing is so bad. Joseph starts walking away, but stops for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at the church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back in the living room, crumbles, cr yeah, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. <clears throat> what about all those cookies? Where did the, the English? Where did those cookies go? Where did they go? I've eaten them. They're gone, I'm sorry. If it makes me feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anywhere. The M has helped. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm going to go catch the game. Have fun, Dad. <coughs> um. 
Wow, I guess I really didn't plan this through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could, could it be? Is it a pub? It's a, a big, burned out neon sign hangs up on the tiny dive bar. Kim and Jim's, huh? All right, this will do. <clears throat> Fancy, I like that. That's a my type of bar. <clears throat> With the jazz, ooh, the bar is dim, small, and dimly lit. The crack of pool sounds in the back as patrons laugh in. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. And I can't tell if he's Kim or Jim. I pull a seat up at the bar. What it'll be? One beer, please. <coughs> sure thing, boss. <clears throat> The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I, I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Kim or Jim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team is, is of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels, and I slightly cheer on my favorite team, my favorite team hoping that I didn't get any confidential confrontational arguments with the fan of the opposing team. Worst thing when you go to a pub when there's a game on. <clears throat> Several people in the bar are wearing the distinctive colours of the team I dislike. Although I believe that the demeanour like that, like me, the passion of their team is all in good fun. A middle aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hello hey sailor. Oh hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? <clears throat> oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm daddy by the way. <coughs> Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. See so if they keep up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. Also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Whoa! <clears throat> I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh. Buy a gallon of drink. Uh, I don't know. This one will be live, and I'll say, "Come on, chat, tell me." But I'm not live. If you want me to live stream this game, I will. So let me know. Um, <clears throat> don't mind. Ah, uh, maybe some other time. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gone close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points on the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear them throwing a grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the boonie man from the coffin shop. He sits alone, slipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Oh, I would love, I'd, I would love some like whiskey right now, <clears throat> or Bailey's. Like, blame that on Amy. If you guys, okay, question. Put it in the comments below if you want me to play a drunk, like, do a drunk live like, live stream. Or, like, every any single time I die, I have to do a shot. Let me know. That'll be, I think, a very fun thing to do. <clears throat> Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based on, upon your our win slash lose record, I said that my team is superior. That's why you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends then. We both go silently, rooting for our respective team. The game is close. Both sides playing the hardest. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a special glass of the man dressing whisker. He raises his in response. An unspoken truth, truce is formed between us, based on mutual love for the game. He, he motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey, and the man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. <clears throat> Thanks, I'm Daddy. You must be new here. Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in time. I slam me to ears. You'll never find a better spot a uh, place better than Kim and Jim. Is, that, is there an actual Jim or Kim that runs the place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hello. Good guy. Neil's. Not enough Neil's in this world. Okay. You're a, you're a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I drink most things. You like shots? I love shots! <coughs> Thank God. 
Oh, then nods to Neil, who serves a two shot of whiskey. He hands one over to me. Here's to your hell. We take the shots, the whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Oh, <coughs> yeah. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Daddy. This guy is way out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his hand tattoo. It? Oh, he has a hand tattoo. Didn't even see that. Compliment his cool leather jacket. I'll oh, compliment his rugged good. I like his rugged good looks. Your face is good. Thanks. Wait, I think this is what flirting is. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am. Robert signal to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? My daughter kicked out. Not like forever. She's only sleep over with her friends. <coughs> Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. Be right back. Got a powder in my nose. Never seen Robert to this talkative. He must like you. Ha, I guess so. Uh, I gotta admit that Robert has a chuff charm to it. Charm to him. If a guy like thinks that I'm cool, then I really must be. You're cool. <coughs> Robert comes back from the bathroom and picks his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar. Tonight I start walking the same direction. I live in the quarter side down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbours. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Daddy. Well, so are we doing this or what? What? You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realisation rushes over me. I blush. <laughs> Lay on smooth, smiling. Oh, do we smile? I don't know. Oh, God. Um. Smile and nod. Let's do it. Oh, fuck. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment of the door closes behind me. He pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Okay! <laughs> Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up to the stairs, wanting to out while I assume his bedroom is so dark I can't see anything but Robert's insane, intense expression. He kisses me again and I can hear him chucking off his bracket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hand runs down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, don't do normally I do this stuff. <clears throat> do you want to stop? No. No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt as he guides me to him there. Let's have some fun. Holy shit. <laughs> Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house. Or my new house. <clears throat> oh, right. I looked around for Robert. But I found himself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom. The door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> we should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later. Robert cracks a smile. Ooh, sure. Your clothes are over there. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is very bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember. Amanda! <clears throat> Shit, Amanda! I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen, looking slightly disappointed. Ah, oh, man, I was kind of hoping you'd gone kidnapped and had to come rescue you. No, I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? They left a little while ago. <clears throat> oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, we watched the movies, ate snacks, stole the car, you know, the usual sleepover stuff. You teens and your larkasy. So, it's breakfast that's cooking. What's all that about? Well, there's hash browns, eggs, and bacon. Get rid of the eggs, give me lots of hash browns. Oh. <coughs> can I? Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I need to do something about this hangover. Amanda, your, your loving father might have done it last night. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of years. Father of a year. You wouldn't have happened to an. You wouldn't have any aspirin. Oh, I've got just the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs into the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Drink this. The pickle juice? Yep. It's what I used once. Uh, well, would assume someone would use it. I also assume that it works pretty well. 
Although I've never tried it before, and I will try it, obviously. Who raised you? Give us the yet lads. Who raised um you did? Right. Um do I say do I say I not do I say do you got it. This better work. <clears throat> a downer sip of the tart juice. No no more than that. Way more than that. I mean as, as I, I assume. Watch it you. Drink some more pickle juice and help myself to a delicious breakfast that our manager gracefully allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into a runny egg yolk, I start to feel a little better. <coughs> <coughs> Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta go to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya! I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. We do our secret handshake. Huh. And she's off. I I get a little more work done with the home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop into the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They gave me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. <coughs> I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and I really see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room... 103 or 108, I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach for him to help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? <clears throat> the youth turns around, looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm waiting for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Head to the stairs and walk around. Only to find Mr. Vega's class, anyway. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back down downstairs. That punk youth must have sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to the world that lower in general way. <laughs> Gen hard way is standing <laughs> fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head, up, when a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. <clears throat> Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Uh, fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Mm -hmm. You must be daddy. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck oh. in this. Alright, where were we? Now who can tell me about room blinds? <clears throat> God, I can't speak. Just that. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he buzz into the cook of his elbow, making a fire mm -hmm. sound. The whole class interrupts with laughter. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer responsibilities paid on the on page 194 in your textbook nobody's listening mm. or not I guess <clears throat> Mr. Vega turns to me in size mm. middle schoolers right don't don't you teach high schoolers <sighs> both you know budget cuts right mm. thanks so much for coming in no problem Mr. Vega uh, please call me Hugo mm. I don't normally do these parents slash teacher meetings but I'm sure as you know Amanda's a very bright student I'm concerned about her recent behaviour What's going on? Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly in tests. I normally talk to, to chalk this up to seniorists, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It's not even crossed my mind that something might have been wrong. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask is everything okay at home? We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but that was the only that it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your, gu your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, <coughs> I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, think for a moment, and turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you ever catch that, oh. that rye? Yes. Oh, smooth. 
I leave the classroom and make her way out of the school. I'm still a bit in shock. Amanda wasn't able to hide this was able to hide this from me so well. She's always been such a force with positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done for classified for the day now. I'm sorry she'll appreciate a ride her and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull in the car, pull Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega actually just got about her celebrity crushes. So, you talked about Maya Batali all the time? It's a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, let's go to the form. <coughs> Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sound like a deal to me. We drive for a silence for a short while. Amanda plays the game on a phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when, when a kid gets older, they find a way to have to keep things hidden from their parents. And it's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. <coughs> <coughs> and that's okay. But sometimes it's good to have parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents also have to deal with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you, th you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you were invited to in clash and you've not been turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, pops. Seen the risks and all that. <clears throat> I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pulled to a, st a stop line. I, I, Amanda, and she's still texting. Amanda! Just, I want to let you know that you can talk to me about anything. <clears throat> uh-huh. I could tell whatever it is. She doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I hear my ass going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Mm -hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'll get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Oh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Girls and guys can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love ya, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess the conversation is over. To the mall, then. <clears throat> <coughs> Got it now. We have arrived at the mall, a big indoor shopping centre with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat some something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. Language, missy. Heck yeah. Better. Hmm. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurants after greasy restaurants. My heart burns just from looking at the menu. Nobody looks happy to be there. <clears throat> what are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it? Or do you want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you me do the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. <coughs> God, I can't stop coughing. Pretty drunk. We order a giant pile of chips and an actually orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at the rickety table and dig in. Mm. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the cheesy goodness together until we out of nachos. So something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Mm. Oh god. <clears throat> Which meme? All all memes. Amanda sighs deeply and places her, hand, her head in her hand. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funnier the more people do it. So the problem is that at the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all all, all use have already gone, done the joke to death. 
And the worst thing is that in the movies, TVs, and video games, they'll try to jump in on a meme trend, but based on how long it's going to take to make them, the meme will be long dead since it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. <clears throat> oh shit, what up? Dad, please. Anyway, changing to the subject. Where to now? I'm going to go to that goth shop. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish herself as an Ash Hamilton, despite being a self representation of the establishment. <gasps> I don't know what story you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and basically end an assault on what people fought so hard in the Gibbs of Bunk and the hardcore movements in the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in last time. Oh, that one. <clears throat> Amanda runs into the star with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline. Kind of. I'm so proud. Speech, Amanda. Yeah. Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. <coughs> Amanda immediately stops. <clears throat> I clear my throat. <coughs> <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today. To commemorate a historic moment that will forever shape history. On one day, very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and Daniel had too much blue raspberry sushi on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to the dead, goth, and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains. Remy, yeah. That English. Amanda is moved. She began clapping, so fast and fast and more vigorously. So, <clears throat> several other patrons turned their heads. One of them also started clapping. I bowed my head. <laughs> Woo! Oh, hey, chain of wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to sell something to interesting to find. Not much for a dad to look in at death, goth, and beyond. <clears throat> Uh, look at Ionic Mons. I'm so stricken by existential fear. If there's only w if there's only if there's only one one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. I'm not number one. Why do people on go go with dank ranks charge? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. <coughs> I have here a civil argument over a cashier register, and ultimately everyone's carrying a garment and showing it to the bald looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said the blouse was a Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of the Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will this? Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. <coughs> I am the manager. See, I see. Well, he would assume I would outstay my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your spirits were a strongly worded letter by first. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around, storms out, his literal co cottage trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired. I do an inspired in nature. Amanda trucked up to me with a t shirt in her head. Oh boy, here it comes. Hey, Dad Trump 5000. Yes, I'll buy for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one thing this time. Amanda pulls the shirt on the cashier and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says no ring and rings Amanda. Radiant hatred, I hand her the twenty. So what's that guy deal? <coughs> cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she's clearly something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She she hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation's over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Right. <coughs> um I'm probably gonna. I'm actually gonna end this video here. It's a bit shorter than last episode because I don't want to make it too long. Because the longer the episode, the more boring it is. So <coughs> let's quickly save the game, and then there we go. So thank you everyone for watching this episode of Dream Daddy. It's been a while since I've done Dream Daddy, so it's nice that I've kind of got it done. Obviously, I've got a VR game coming out. I'm I literally second I finish ed recording this, I'm gonna go record the other one and edit this one. 
busy, busy day today, and I need to get this all done before three o'clock. Well, about two o'clock, because it's about two hours. Bit stressful, but I can do it. <clears throat> so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see all of you guys in another year. Ta-da!